happening gang it's your boy retro back again with another reaction video yeah yeah today we got a very interesting video um this is a clip coming from our last rnc debate um if you guys didn't see it happened the other day um got very spicy between vivek ramaswamy um not only his challenges but he got spicy with um the gop establishment as a whole calling out the establishment let them know like you're not safe either you guys should be doing more for our party um i'm excited to check this one out with you guys um so we're gonna hop straight into it um this video coming from the liberal hive my yo big shouts to them definitely always keeping us up to date and informed on these situations as they break um so definitely yo go check them out show them some love guys also so make sure you guys hit that like button for me before we even get into it hit that like button guys it don't cost a thing hit that like button for me hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so guys we're on the road to the truth hop aboard for the journey let's get into it y'all All right, folks, so it happened again. Oh, well, I guess in a way, two things happened again. First is another Republican debate, so another debate happened. And uh, secondly, Vivek Ramaswamy absolutely mopped the floor with the useless, cowardly, corrupt neocon establishment. You know, at the past, it seemed as though Vivek Ramaswamy was taking a little bit more of a defensive position in these debates, you know, hitting back hard, not exactly a bad strategy, getting hit from all angles and ready to swing back. Well, this time, it seemed as though he came with a different tactical approach. Instead of swinging back, instead of counter-striking, he decided, I'm going to go out there and throw the first punch. And boy, that's exactly what he did in the most glorious of fashion. He did not hold back. Let's just keep it at that. And as per usual, he hit the freaking nail on the head across the board, causing quite the stir within the Republican establishment. I put together a little compilation for you guys of Vivek's best moments. And then, of course, let's have a conversation about them we got some stuff to get into so let's roll the tape all right folks so this clip might be a little bit longer than normal but it's a highlight montage so boy will it be entertaining just take a look vivek ramaswamy the absolute undisputable undeniable mvp please make your case why would you uh, why should you be the nominee and not the former president i think there's something deeper going on in the republican party here and i am upset about what happened last night We've become a party of losers at the end of the day. We have a cancer in the Republican establishment. Let's speak the truth. I mean, since Ronna McDaniel took over as chairwoman of the RNC in 2017, we have lost 2018, 2020, 2022, no red wave that never came. We got trounced last night in 2023. And I think that we have to have accountability in our party. For that matter, Ron, if you want to come on stage tonight, you want to look the GOP voters in the eye and tell them you resign, I will turn over my yield my time to you and frankly look the people there are cheering for losing in the republican party think about who's moderating this debate this should be tucker carlson joe rogan and elon musk Got we'd have point. 10 times the viewership asking questions that gop primary voters actually care about and bringing more people into our party you yep. think the Democrats, and we've got Christian Welker here, do you think the democrats would actually hire greg gutfeld to host a democratic debate they wouldn't do it and so the fact of the matter is, I mean, Christian, I'm going to use this time because this is actually about you in the media and the corrupt media <laughs> establishment. Ask you the Trump-Russia collusion hoax that you pushed on this network for years. Was yeah. that real or was that Hillary Clinton made up disinformation? Answer the question. Go. Yeah. Mr. This is how we get our country back. Hey, I'm telling you, Vivek is not sparing anyone with his words anymore. Like he said, he's put a defense role no more. No longer is Vivek the, the, the response guy. He is on their case early. Love to see Vivek, you know, coming out swinging. Mr. Ross, we need answers. This is how we get our country back. We need accountability because this media rigged the 2016 election. They rigged the 2020 election with the Hunter Biden laptop story. Mr. Ramaswamy, and they're going to rig this election. Your time is up. Accountability. Let me turn That's to Governor, Governor Christie. How do you get TikTok banned if you use it? Well, I, I, I want to laugh at why Nikki Haley didn't answer your question, which is about looking at families in the eye. In the last debate, she made fun of me for actually joining TikTok while her own daughter was actually using the app for a long time. So you might want to take care of your family first. Leave my daughter out of your voice. Your <laughs> the next generation of Americans are using it. And that's actually the point. You have her supporters crapping her up. That's fine. Here's the truth. You're just the scum. easy answer is actually to say that we're just going to ban one app. We got to go further. 
We have to ban any U.S. company actually transferring U.S. data to the Chinese. Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, got a $5 million bribe from Ukraine. That's why we're sending $200 billion back to that same country. The fact yeah. of the matter is the Republican Party is not that much better. You have the likes of Nikki Haley, who stepped down from her time at the U.N., bankrupt or in debt is, was her family. Then she becomes a military contractor. She joins the board of Boeing and otherwise, and is now a multimillionaire. So I think that that's wrong when Republicans do it or Democrats do it. That's the choice we face. Do you want a leader from a different generation who's going to put this country first, or do you want Dick Cheney in three-inch heels? All right, Mr. Ramaswamy. We got two of them on stage. Mr. Ramaswamy, thank you. So, and so hey. we framed this. Why well, he, he didn't have to cut her up like that? Vivek Ramaswamy is telling the truth, though. You got to listen and be there for like she ate him up about you know being on TikTok. Vivek Ramaswamy is in touch, in tune with the next generation. She doesn't even know. He's like, control your your daughter's on TikTok. What do you mean stay off of TikTok? The next generation is on there. We need to go after all of these companies. You know, selling information to you know foreign foreign uh entities. You know what I mean? You can't do that. All right, Mr. In which case, we've got two of them on stage Mr. tonight. Ramaswamy, thank you. <laughs> and so to frame this as some kind of battle between good versus evil, don't buy it. And I'd like the likes of the, the sharpest of the war hawks on Ukraine, Nikki Haley, to have some accountability and answer. Do you want to use U.S. taxpayer money to fund the banning of Christians? That is actually what's happening. They're using the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. They have banned them. The Ukrainian parliament just did this last <laughs> week, supported by our dollars. And I think you owe it to the American people, Nikki, to at least this Mr. one time Ramaswamy, at least condemn, thank you. That's time. At least Mr. Ramaswamy, thank you. their banning of Christians. Mr. Ramaswamy, or else thank we're talking you. Out of both sides Mr. Of the Ramaswamy, thank you. We ask the questions. What we need to do is stop using our military to protect somebody else's border halfway around the world when we're short right here at home. Get serious about protecting this mm. border. And then the other thing that hasn't been discussed is the northern border. I'm the only candidate on the stage, as far as I'm aware, who has actually visited the northern border. There was enough fentanyl that was captured just on the northern border last year to kill three million Americans. So we gotta just skate to where the puck is going, not just where the puck is. Don't just build the wall, build both walls. Can't just complete the wall, use the military to seal the Swiss cheese for the tunnels that they're actually building underneath that wall. Thank you, That's Mr. Ramaswamy. practical and actually get this job done. Thank I mean, he's going out. Oh, wow. Come on now. I don't know about you guys, but I enjoy this new brand of politics thoroughly. Let's not call it a brand, actually. Let's call it a firebrand. Holy moly, what an absolute beast. <laughs> He held nothing back, and you know what? I have been waiting for somebody to step on that stage and say all the things that have been on my mind. To look Ronna McDaniel in the face, for instance, and to say all that, absolutely based. We don't see accountability. He is totally right. We do not see accountability. Ronna McDaniel assumes the position of RNC chairwoman back in 2017, and speaking of back, we got back-to-back-to-back <laughs> -back -back losses, or underperformances, all under her watch and she's yet to resign. It's absolutely disgraceful. Mitt Romney's little niece, little nepotism hire Ronna McDaniel, should have resigned two elections ago. But obviously that's never going to happen because there's a sense of entitlement. You know, politics to these people isn't about performance. It isn't about achieving actual end results, positive end results for voters and constituents. Yeah. To these people, it's about job title and prestige and power yeah. and wealth. And obviously that's the only thing that Ronna McDaniel is interested in, considering how deeply unpopular she is and her history of failure. If she really cared about conservative policies, conservative voters, and most importantly, conservative wins and results, she would have either done two things, resign or show an actual willingness to adapt, change, and embrace grassroots political movements happening in the American right. But instead, of course, she does none of that. You know, the sense of entitlement is just disgusting. And based on some of the reports that we're seeing, it really makes clear the dynamic Ooh. here. Now, this report that I'm going to show you guys from Cassandra McDonald at TimCast is eyewitness testimony. It's hearsay. So just to add that as a disclaimer before we get into it, but apparently a source who was sitting near GOP chairwoman, Ronna McDaniel, at tonight's debate told TimCast News that she called Vivek Ramaswamy a, quote, a-hole and declared that the party would not be giving him one Sent. He's an a-hole, total a-hole, McDaniel said. He's desperate because he's doing bad in the polls. He won't be getting a cent from us. She loudly booed him during his exchange with Nikki Haley. According to the person sitting nearby, she was in complete meltdown mode over Vivek, the source wow. said. This was in the middle of the audience, within earshot of at least 50 people. Vivek's doing poorly in the polls? I don't think so. I think Vivek has performed admirably, especially considering his position as a pariah in the party, at least with the GOP.
GOP establishment elite. But if this eyewitness report is right, it shows exactly what I've been talking about. Ronna McDaniel is power tripping. She cares more about herself, her title, again, the prestige, the fact that she has the power right. to move money and control who gets what. She's more interested in her little personal vendettas and her own personal emotional trips rather than what the voters want. Vivek is deeply popular with Republicans and especially the America oh, First no. Grassroots Movement. But Ronna McDaniel says she doesn't care. She doesn't like him. She thinks he's an a-hole. And so she won't give him one cent. She's going to control who gets what. How utterly despicable. That's her reaction yeah, to somebody telling the truth for once about her. You know, if that report is true, it shows how deep the corruption is. It shows how the party has these kind of puppet masters who get in these positions due to nepotism. Her uncle's Mitt Romney. Therefore, she gets to be the RNC chairwoman. And she throws Ooh. fits when she doesn't get what she wants. She's supposed to be a public servant. She's supposed to be representing the people of the party and their will and their ambitions. Vivek is absolutely on fire. And when it wasn't Ronna McDaniel in his sights, when it wasn't the media and Kristen Walker, I don't really want to go too much into that because, I mean, it pretty much speaks for itself. It was Nikki Haley, another very <laughs> deserving individual. Their little interaction is quite interesting where he called her Dick Cheney in three-inch heels. Absolutely based. But again, he's right. He's right in framing her as a warmongering hawk. That's who she is. That's how she made her money. That's how she created her career in politics. I mean, it's pretty much her entire brand. I know everything about foreign policy and diplomacy. That's what she loves to present. And then it seems like her answer to everything is strength and war. Let's strike them first and spend billions of dollars on other people's problems. Absolutely idiotic. Then when Vivek yeah. Ramaswamy called her out on a clear point of hypocrisy relating to TikTok, he mentioned her daughter. You see just how <laughs> manipulative Nikki Haley is. Again, she showed her true colors. You know, as if it's this huge moral offense to even reference somebody's child, even in a completely benign example of hypocrisy relating to TikTok usage. She called him scum. Why? Because she knew he was right. And she'd rather play an emotionally manipulative game as if she's some sort of victim because he merely highlighted her hypocrisy in relation to her daughter's use of the platform. Instead of accepting the fact that he absolutely owned her, she calls him scum and acts as if it was this great offense. Give me a freaking break. I don't know if it's a perception thing. You know, the New York Times just <coughs> released a ranking of top performances at the GOP debate. They put Nikki Haley at the top and Vivek Ramaswamy at the bottom. I do see some people or a good chunk of people supporting Nikki Haley. I don't know if it's a perception thing or what it is, but for me, the contrast seems absolutely clear. I see a bunch of neocon, warmongering, self-interested, career politician hacks, and then I see Vivek Ramaswamy absolutely slapping them, and for me, the image is clear. Vivek Ramaswamy's the man, and the rest of these clowns shouldn't be serving burgers, let alone serving <laughs> patriotic Republican <laughs> constituents. Hey. Yo, there we have it, guys. Sorry, I'm started having a coughing fit there at the end i don't know what i had a tickle in my throat and it turned out to be a coughing fit but yo there we have it liberal hive mind breaking it down for us once again love to see it um and love to see vivek ramaswamy you know taking out taking out of that like turtle se turtle shell position you know where he was kind of defending himself um in the first um, rnc debate Taking um taking an or the first two RNC debates I should say and then coming out in the third one swinging you know swinging for the fences um going after not only you know his challenges but then going after you know some of the corrupt figures inside of the GOP party um you know and letting us know you know Ronald McDaniel's is not for the party if she really was she would have stepped down a long time ago um and, and she just power tripping to the point where she can't see that she is the you know the poison to the GOP party um and. And, you know, I'm glad we got figures like Vivek Ramaswamy finally taking, you know, taking forth that that initiative to call out these figures, these corrupt figures, not only as challenges, but calling out all the, you know, the figures in the GO on the GOP. Um, love to see it. And also him going off on Nikki Haley. I don't even want to get started on that one. Really had me laughing. Um, calling her, you know, Dick Cheney and three inch heels. That thing I about fell out. I, I don't know if you guys see, I about fell out my seat right there, man. Oh my gosh. And I do see that, you know, with Nikki Haley assuming this position of, you know, she's, you know, um, power and strength and grit. 
Um, and, and people are buying. It looks like people are buying it. I'm not sure why, you know, we can't see the Vivek Ramaswamy. I, I feel like he should be polling a little bit higher, after, especially after that last debate. I feel like he ate them up, um, went after not only the challenges, but the establishment also. Um, and that further proved him as, you know, a, a, a strong candidate. You know what I mean? He's independent. He's going to think for himself. He's not going to follow the crowds. And I feel like that's what we need. I don't understand why he's polling um, fifth and uh, among all the other, all the challengers after that last debate. It's got me. I thought he would, you know, climb at least uh, above Tim Scott, but I don't know. And Ron DeSantis, but we'll, we'll see, guys. Um, definitely let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, make sure you guys hit that like button for me. It don't cost a thing. Hit that like button, guys. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so, guys. We're on the road to the truth. Hop aboard for that journey. I'll catch you guys on the next one. We. Come back.